Good morning. This is what we're going to be doing. I'm going to be sharing with you all how to make this gorgeous little clutch bag. Now, as Joe said, the idea is, let's have a look. I'll pop you this up in the close-up so you can have a nice little look at what it is. How fabulous does this little bag look? Look, so what we're going to be doing is we're going to be, I'm going to be teaching you how to do the embroidery, how to do the bag making techniques. I'm going to give you the pattern and we'll, we can make it along together if you want. Because when we've watched this once, you can save this video onto your stream so you can come back and make it over and over. So if you want to make this exact, um, this exact little bag, this is the pattern that you're going to need. So all you're going to do is you're going to follow the link that we've got in here. You can download the pattern and you can see it's got full step-by-step -step instructions. But then most importantly, you've also got the pattern that you're going to need. So can you see? Here's the pattern for the top of the bag, and then you've got the pattern for the, the base of the bag, and then you've got the pattern for the back. So it talks you through what you need to cut out, and then we're going to put the whole bag together. We're going for an intermediate one, because we've got a bag with a little bit of embroidery on the front, but also those gussets, so that you can make it as like a little three-dimensional bag. Now, I haven't put a zip or anything in, I've kept it nice and simple, but yes, we're going to do a little bit of work with the gussets, for example. So, right, get that put to one side, Joe. Are you ready for me to start and walk you through it? Oh, yes, please. Okay, right, so for the first bit, I've done, I've cut all of those patterns out that I was talking about in the colours that it tells me. So you're going to need the uh, actual base. I'm going to do it, on, obviously, in a white fabric. And I've cut some wadding out as well to go with that. You're going to need some for your lining, which are all cut out. This is going to be the lining of your flap and then also the actual flap itself so you can see these are going to go back to back and then to make that umbrella shape you actually need to cut out the umbrella so you can see i've got all of that cut ready now what you will find is first of all we need to stick this onto the front of our flap so i've actually cut this out it tells you in the instructions to cut it out uh, onto a little bit of heat and bond so that what that means is when i bring in my iron we're going to be able to bond this onto the front of our bag panel. So again, I'm just going to bring the iron in, give it a bit of an iron to start with. This is going to position down on there, Joe, and then I'm just going to iron that over. And then what you'll see, if I just remind you again what the finished one looked like, you'll see that we've got this really nice kind of, um, I've used a variegated thread. So can you see on here, we've used this variegated thread right along the top and it gives it just a lovely finish. So I'm going to do that there. I'm going to take it onto my machine and do my stitching just all the way around the outside here. So I'm going to use a zigzag stitch. So I've got my stitch on my machine, my zigzag's number three, and I've taken the stitch length right down. So I've got my stitch down at, uh, at 0 0.4 on this one. So let me just show you, if I take it over to the machine here, I'm going to start, I'm going to start in the middle and I'm going to do one side and then the other. So can you see we're going to pop our stitch into here. I've got the variegated thread in and I'm just going to go over this and then feed it through every, ever so gently and it's just going to stitch around the top there, Joe. How are you getting on there, Sarah? Well, I've done that lovely stitching around the top with that variegated thread. It does make a lovely difference, variegated threads. And then also what I'm going to do is I'm just going to switch, if I just turn the machine off and back on, Mine's an, uh, is an automated one, so it's going to set me back to zero. And I'm just going to do the little bits, in fact, it's probably easier coming from the base, from the base up to the centre point of my, uh, of my, well, umbrella, yeah. So we're just going to go up to the middle of the umbrella like this. Can you see, Joe? There we go. So there's one. And then I'll do exactly the same in the next one. Just all, so just all the way through, just making it look very umbrella-like. Where's that thread from? Do you know, Sarah? Just a very, just a variegated thread. I've had this in my stash for years. This one. Uh, I mean, you can pick up variegated threads anywhere, really, Joe. They're quite, quite easily accessible. What I have done, because I'm a little bit, uh, I'm a little bit tight. Let's be honest. Is I haven't threaded my variegated thread to the underneath. I've just done it in the, um, in the top thread. So I've kept just a plain white. So underneath, you see, we've just got some plain white stitching. 
Right, the, he's the kind of top part of my umbrella. And you know, that's the part that you probably assumed was going to be quite difficult. And when you see it, you realise it's totally not. So you're going to do that. You've got the top and then also we've got what's going to be the flap of the bag. Now, I've already popped in my position, you know, the little so that we can do this part here so that we can get this. So I've already popped that into place. And what we're going to do is we're going to go right sides together. Here we go right sides together. And I'm just going to pin this in place, Joe, and I'm going to stitch all the way around the outside. Now, because, um, because I'm going to do this and then turn it inside out, I'm not going to worry about using the variegated thread. So you could, you could either re-thread your machine or, just for speed, because we're obviously on a live here, I've got, uh, I've got two machines set up, so I'm just going to switch out and put in my machine with the plain cotton and I'm just going to go all the way around the outside here and do my uh, do some basic stitching around this. So I, be, I was quite close to the edges but oh I think that's what look at that I've missed a little bit at the bottom can you see I've just got like a little hole at the bottom it's all right though now's the time to check because you can just whip that straight back through I can see exactly where I've missed that and we can just go and re-catch that around the edge so you just take that back into your machine and I'm just going to go right back around that last little bit I knew when I was doing it that I was a little bit tight with it and just make sure you get all of that have I caught that in plenty there I'll just go over it one last time just to make sure that I really catch that last little bit in because we want this to be perfect I'm taking this for my mum after we get finished here Joe uh, I'm going to go around and see you in the garden this weekend I'm quite excited I see you ironing as you go along. Why is the uh, ironing so important? So well, I know I you're not really a fan of the ironing. No, <laughs> I'm not a fan of the ironing at all. I'm a big fan of the ironing when it comes to doing my sewing. It just keep, makes everything so much neater. So much neater and you can just kind of keep it nice and straight as we're going. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch back to my other machine that's got the variegated thread in. And I'm going to go right round the outside with a little bit of top stitch just with that uh, that lovely variegated thread right do you want me to show you how to do this little part on the front oh yes so this, please. it's a really nice embroidery technique to make raindrops so bear in mind you're going to need to do two panels for your bag this is the panel as it uh, as it comes and all you're going to need to do is you're going to need to draw some little dots on that we're going to work towards for our raindrops now I've already done quite a lot of my raindrops so I'm going to show you the technique but um, I've already done a few, so I've left the last, uh, the last half a dozen or so. So if I lift this out, I've got embroidery thread. I'm going to get, let you get really close on where we're at here. And then I'm going to show you exactly how we do it. So you want your embroidery thread. So I've looped it in into a nice big thick needle. And you come up through the base. And then what you're going to do is you're going to come down. Uh, so just behind where you were at. Can you see? So we'll go just behind and then you're going to come upwards like this through through the, the through a bag depending on how long you want your raindrop and make sure you hook that thread under can you see joe yeah. so i'm going to make sure that thread is hooked under i'm going to feed this round and then that is going to give me that little bit of a loop you see and then to finish off the loop you just go back in just behind where you've got that uh, that loop so I can show you that again because look I've left four to do to show you so there is my nice little raindrop in the red I'm, I thought it was very apt to do rainbow colours for this one so are you ready again we're going to come up through where I've put my little dot on that I want to work from so you come up through the dot and thread comes up and I'm going through the wadding as well here by the way then we're going to come back in just behind where we had done the um where we'd, we'd come up with our thread and then depending on how long you want your raindrop to be you're going to come out a little bit further under and as you pull out you're going to loop that thread around so that it just catches and then we just drop in right behind to secure the thread off three more it'll all make sense when, once you've seen me do it a few times so up through the dot right up through the dot and then we're going to go just have your thread here back in just behind where the dot is and then you're going to come out probably about half an inch I've left for here but this one here needs to make sure it's behind your needle that's exactly the bit you need to understand you're going to pull this towards you and that's going to loop your thread on as we're doing the loop and then to secure it you just go on back underneath here we go so there's the back of our bag right so you need sorry there's the front of our bag 
You also need the back of your bag, so we're going to stitch our front and our back together. But before we do, we need to stitch these little darts together. So with the darts, Jo, I've got my, uh, I've got my plain thread in now. With the darts, what you're going to do is you're going to fold them together like this, right? We're going to go together and then leave about a quarter of an inch seam allowance and just stitch down that dart. So are you ready? We're going to go in from here and we're just going to stitch. Oh, I haven't quite caught that there. There we go. We're going to stitch down the edge. And this is what gives the bag its very 3D feel. There we go. So if I lift this off now and just show you the first one. Oh, there we go. So that there now. And you see is the 3D dart on the base of the bag. Right, Joe, what I'm going to do, if you think, this is how we want our bag to go together. So this, these two are going to clip together. This needs to be attached to the back so that it comes round and onto the front. So what you're going to do is, there's the back. We're going to attach this onto the back of our bag. And just think about how we would, so that it's going to open over like that. So I'm just going to pop that in place again. Hold that with a couple of little clips. And then I'm going to go and stitch the, uh, stitch the back on. So you can see there, that's going to form like the front bit of our bag over there. And then we want the actual front of our bag to go on. Now, we're not going to stitch it together. We're going to leave it open at the front. But when you're stitching a bag, for those of you who are maybe new to this, you always go right sides together. So you're going to put the two right sides of your bag completely together. Leave it open at the top. But I'm going to, and these are just little quilting clips. I, when, I'm, uh, when I'm doing live demonstrations like this, I haven't got time to be uh, sitting pinning all the time. So I just use these clips because they're a lot quicker and easier than using pins. So I'm just holding this in place with the clips and then it all comes together. Right, I'm just going to quickly show you how my bag's getting on because that is looking spot on so there's our lovely bag except it looks a little bit rubbish inside at the moment because we haven't done the lining so i'm going to do the lining now so it's exactly the same technique joe i've cut the lining pieces out i've already done all of the cutting out i'm going to do my little gussets on my lining just like you saw me do them on the top bag and we're going to stitch the lining parts together and then i'm going to show you how you put the lining inside your bag right are you ready for me to put this inside Indeed. So I'm going to turn this bag back inside out because I just turned it that way to kind of show you, show you the technique. So what you do is you always remember if you're doing bag making for the first time, you must have right sides together. So that's the right side of my bag there. I'm going to pop this back inside here. And so I must have the right side of this here. Look what I did, by the way. I left a little pokey hole at the bottom so that we can turn this whole thing through. So the lining is going to go inside your bag here, Joe. And then what you're going to do is you're just going to line up the seam. So where we've got the seam there, I'm going to line it up with this seam here. And I'm just going to put one of those little clips on. They are so handy, these. They're called quilting clips, by the way. If you're on the website looking for them, they are called quilting clips. So go and get yourself some quilting clips. If you're a little bit like me and you haven't got a lot of patience when it comes to, uh, when it comes to pins, I just find I can't really be bothered, Joe. It sounds terrible, doesn't it? But uh, it's so much quicker if you're doing it with the, the little clips. So we've clipped the inside of our bag inside. What I'm going to do on my sewing machine is just take off the arm so that we can sew in a circle around the arm. And what you're going to watch me do now is I'm going to come all the way through this and basically start, I'm going to start at the back and I'm going to come all the way around sewing the whole thing together and then we'll do the magic turning it inside out, okay? So I'm going to start, I'll start with the... Um, I'll start with the back of the bag first, it's a little bit easier. Get all of that lined up, and I like to start kind of in the middle. So let's have a look at that. Yeah, I don't think. Do you know? Actually, I don't think I need to go. The bag's big enough that I can uh, that I can comfortably do it without without stitching around my arm here, and it might be a little bit easier for you to see as we're going on there. And you see, so you can just watch. I'm going to go about about half an inch in from the side, and I'll try and keep it so that you'll be able to see what I'm doing there. So can you see? I've gone all the way round and stitched all the way around. Just make sure, have a little look, and make sure you've caught that in all the way around, because you don't, I'm close to the edge there, so we haven't lost that. Right, that's looking perfect. Now for the moment of truth, you see, the whole thing needs turning inside out. So, uh, oh, let's hope it goes all right. So you go in from your little hole at the top, and we're just gonna go in and grab the bag, and feed all of that bag through the little hole that we've done. It always feels, this is always the bit where I get nervous and I think, oh, what if I haven't put something in the right place? But as long as you follow the tutorial, exactly how I've shown you, trust me, this is actually a really easy bag to do. 
So I'm going to come back into here and I'm going to just make sure that bag's nice and round. I do like a nice, nice gusset on my bag, as you were saying, Joe. So there's that. And then you see the lining. What I'll do is just check this is all going to be correct. Yes, it is. Give my bag a nice little iron. Uh, just because I think it always looks neater when it's had a nice little iron, doesn't it? And then I'm going to just stitch that lining shut. So before we do anything else, I'm going to get this lining turned right out here and then stitch it all closed. There we go. Right, there's my lining going into the bag. And then again, I'm just going to make sure all this has got a nice little press down here, uh, just to make sure it's all nice and neat. And then if you want, you can do an extra little bit of top stitching around the edge here. I actually don't think it needs it. The, the, the one that I'd prepared ahead of time, I'd done uh, a little bit of top stitching on, but I think it looks quite nice, just, just like that as it is. And you see then that is going to have a nice fold over at the top. And we've got that perfect little clutch bag that literally you've watched us make from start to finish in the last 37 minutes. So it's taken me about half an hour to make that. What a fabulous little project. Now I know I'd cut done a lot of the cutting out there, but it's what, it's, it's an hour's project. So give it a go. As long as you've got a little bit of fabric and a sewing machine at home, you can be doing this project because you've got those, uh, those templates and downloads that we've given you.